So this is Razer's brand new RazorBook 13. I bought this with my own money from the Microsoft Store, $1,600, and uh, I'm not sure I'm going to keep it. I've got some, I've got some mixed feelings about this thing. But overall, I'd say I really, really like it. I got a strong like on it. But there's, there's a couple of things that are bothering me. So what I'm going to do in this video is tell you about why I bought it, give you a tour of the device, and uh, some of the things that were not as smooth as I would hope they would be, but maybe are alleviated by the time you're watching this because this is a new device, so you know, you gotta give them time to work out kinks. Okay, so number one, what I'm looking for. I want an Ultrabook. I have a gaming laptop and then I have my desktop. So I wanted something that I could use for working in a different part of the house or going on trips, which I do have a couple business trips coming up. Now you could make the argument, like my friend Kenny did, that maybe I should use my Galaxy Tab S7 Plus. It's a 12 inch display. It's, it's a really high resolution in OLED. It has a keyboard. But if you've ever done serious work, you know, just like, I'm not talking about editing videos or anything like that, but if you've ever done like Intel, a lot of email work and multiple email clients, like multiple Gmail accounts, and you're doing spreadsheet work, moving a lot of files around. There's just something about Android, even Dex, that's not as convenient or comfortable as using Windows. Simple as that. Plus, I wanted a little bit more screen real estate, which is where this 13.4 inch display kicks the crap out of that 12.3 inch display. 1.1 inches, goes a long way. All right, so that's what I was looking for. I found, I narrowed it down to the Dell XPS 13 and this, which are very similar machines. But after watching Max Tech and, and a couple other channels, I noticed that the performance on this was actually better than on the Dell, and you can attribute that to the vapor chamber and the dual fans for cooling. By the way, this has not gotten really loud to the point where it irritated me. I've been listening for it because I'm a reviewer, but it, I, it never really interrupted my workflow or any conference calls or anything like that. This device, for non-gaming at least, doesn't get loud. And I have used it mostly unplugged, by the way, and I was blown away by the performance. I did spend some time with the 8th gen uh, ThinkPad Carbon X1 with a 10th gen Intel i7, 16 gigs of RAM, and that thing was slow when it wasn't plugged in. This is not. I mean, this, comparatively, this it, it makes that ThinkPad look really slow, which is bizarre because it's such a nice device. But, but anyhow, for now, just know 11th gen, 1165 G7, in the Razer Book is an awesome, awesome processor. This also has 16 gigs of RAM, but only 256 gig SSD. So I swapped in my one terabyte SSD that I had lying around, and unfortunately, it wasn't a super smooth process, which is what I was referring to earlier. Driver support is actually good, <laughs> but it took a long time for me to get those drivers installed. So Razer doesn't have on their support page all the drivers for this device, and Synapse, which is what you use now in Razer laptops to go fetch drivers, didn't have all those drivers either. So that left me with Windows Update. And for whatever reason, spamming that button over time, talking like three, four days, eventually I got all those drivers installed. Now it wasn't really that bad. Wi-Fi, keyboard, trackpad, all the essentials were enabled, but things like um, the, the, the touch for the display wasn't working, but then I ended up disabling it anyway to save battery life, which is a real thing. And um, I was also having just some random stuff too, some various sensors, I didn't even know what they did, so I had to contact Razer. That was a bit annoying, but eventually it, got, it found itself getting installed. So that is unfortunate, it was a bit of a drag, but I feel like right now I'm in a pretty good place on those drivers. I mean, I don't have any missing devices right now, so I should be happy. But there's a part of me that wonders if maybe something is missing, right? Which is totally a me problem. Objectively, if someone just walked up, opened this up, you know, looked at device manager, they'd be like, oh, your drivers are installed, you're fine. But I'm being a little bit, you know, oversensitive. Okay, drivers, or rather uh, ports and that type of thing. So this little tiny three pound device has a full size HDMI out, has an SD card reader, micro, and a full size uh, USB-C with Thunderbolt 4 support. On the other side, you get another one of those and a full size USB-A and a headphone jack. So the full size USB-A is super important to me and the, so is the HDMI. So when we eventually get back to campus, I'm a, I'm a college teacher, I'll be using my HDMI out to connect to the secondary screen, the projector. The, I know that sounds petty, but I'm telling you, man, it's so great to not have to worry about that. I bring my dongles, my dongle working. That's awesome. Um, I've had the same dongle for like six years. So maybe not that long, for a few years, and eventually that thing's gonna break. Okay, and then the full-size USB-A is great for just everyday use. I connect the Death Adder V2 to it, and I don't wanna get an adapter, or I wanna use Bluetooth. Bluetooth, for me, I just, I don't like Bluetooth connections on mice. I've been testing them a lot lately because I've got a slew of mice from Razer, but I haven't had a lot of trouble, like just feeling like Bluetooth is really pulling at a high rate. 
And please let me know in the comments if I'm completely you know, wrong about this or if maybe you have a solution. Okay, now when you open this thing up, you get a beautiful display. Now the display will kick up a little bit off your table and give you a slight raise for your keyboard when you're typing, but it's not much. Now the display on this is 1920 by 1200. So it's more than 1080p, but it's not quite 2K or 4K. It looks really good. This thing gets super bright. I think it's rated for 440 nits. Whew, it's bright. And I usually have it at like half brightness to um, a quarter brightness, right around there. I've disabled the auto brightness because I just don't like what Windows does that. So for, uh, for me, I'm like deliberately monitoring my brightness levels and I really feel like this, this thing is bright and I like that. Now the speakers, um, I'm having a problem. The right speaker started popping. It makes this like repetitive like drumming noise like that, uh, while anything's coming from it. When it's dead silent, it doesn't make that noise. But I have a ticket into Razer to find out more about that. The keyboard, when I had it side by side with a Razer Blade Stealth, I really feel like this keyboard lighting is better. And I love the look of the, the silver, the gray, the white keys, all this contrast to me, is, it's just super cool. And uh, I've got a pretty basic backlighting schema that I use, but I do have the multimedia keys, the brightness keys, I have those a different color so to me it just it really pops and i wish i kept that blade stealth so i can show you the side by side but uh i am not the world's best reviewer i didn't think about that i just returned the stealth and kept this i was like oh which one do i want so what you, i mean hey i'll put my other stuff first what am i gonna do okay keyboard uh is not the best thing in the world to type on so i'm having some issues where it's not repeating keys or anything like that or skipping keys i think i'm just not pressing all of the way so it feels like it's almost like this uh how do I put this? It's like you're walking, it's raining and you're walking on cement and there's like, it's just uneven ground. So when I put my right foot down, right? I type on a letter, I feel like, okay, there's the ground. So then when I put my left foot down and typing on another key, I feel like I should just put my foot the same amount of you know pressure downward. And then I find myself almost tripping like, oh, wait, it's shallower or it's deeper. And that inconsistency is probably a physical thing, but I haven't been able to nail it down yet. So I'm going to have to find a way to measure that and hopefully that all makes sense. That was a pretty good off the cuff analogy, but, but anyway, hopefully that all makes sense. I'll dig into it a little bit more, but that is one problem. I feel like when I'm typing, I have to go back and make corrections, which is not going to last for me long term. I'm going to have to get a different laptop if that's the case. But even at $1,600, I think it's pretty reasonably priced. I mean, it is a gorgeous, gorgeous machine. It's well-cooled, it's fast and powerful, it has awesome ports, but Dell XPS, I think it's more expensive. I mean, I've been looking, it's really complicated, I think, to figure out the price of the new XPS 13, you know, the exact same specs. It's really hard to figure out what the price is on that thing. I know that sounds weird, but you know, I've been looking. Anyway, I think it's still more expensive. So. I do like it. I'm going to do a full review on this in a couple of weeks. I'll be doing some more tests. I'm going to try to, you know, figure out the keyboard problem. I'm going to, I got the troubleshoot thing going on with Razer. They've responded. So they're, they're going to get back to me to figure out the speaker problem. And uh, yeah, otherwise, let me know what questions you have. This is a beautiful device. And if you're looking for something like this and it makes sense, just follow along and I'll let you know through the next video. And please do drop comments uh, with your questions, but I'll let you know the next video, my final thoughts on this thing. So thanks for watching and we'll catch you on the next one. Cheers.